All right, howdy folks. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a minute. I don't know where I'm at here in the camera. <clears throat> but anyway, this is a blowgun. Old school blowgun. About 53 inches long. This thing I have had since I was about 16 or 17 years old. And I haven't shot it since then. But I've always saved it all these years. It's kind of silly. It's just uh, obviously a aluminum tube with some funny grommets for a mouthpiece and two grommets here for, I guess, for holding. And they were adjustable. This thing hasn't been touched in years. But for all you old guys out there like me, I don't know how old you are because I don't really know all 5,000 of you, but I know a few of you. And, uh, well, when I was a kid, we didn't have uh, Amazon or the internet to go look at groovy stuff. So it was always in the back of a magazine, uh, Popular Mechanics or, uh, I don't know, just any kind of magazine you would get your hands on when you were a kid. Uh, not the dirty magazines, don't go there. Uh, I don't think they did anyway, but there was always BB guns uh, and, and, and and blow guns and uh, knives and slingshots. Oh man, that's where I saw my first wrist rocket was in the back of a magazine. So yeah, this came from those days when you thumb through the magazine as a kid and you go, oh, I want that. And uh, if any of you have experienced that, if you're old enough to have experienced that, uh, chime in on the comments there. If not, well, that's okay too, but you just don't know the joy of, uh, of getting a, a mail-order blowgun. So now the things were made to shoot these strange little darts. Now we always called these love beads. I don't know why they came in in strings in lengths long enough to like do doorways and stuff it was kind of a a hippy yippy dippy thing i guess uh, i don't know i knew some friends that had their doorways done in love beads so you would take this piece of steel and you get it in a long long piece i don't know 12 16 20 inches worth we called it piano wire and you would heat the tip and then take this little orange ball and melt it onto the end. And you could make your own darts. Some would be longer than others. You could make, uh, you know, heavier darts or lighter darts. And it wasn't a whole lot of science to it. You just kind of did it. So anyway, we're going to take a shot after all these years. We're going to take a shot. There's one of the beads all by itself. I don't know if it's focusing or not. That's why I keep getting behind the camera. But there's one of the love beads. And I'm not even so sure that they came singular like this. They may have been on the string and you had to actually pull them off. I don't know. But it was a real primitive uh, blowgun and a real primitive dart. But it worked great. Let's see how this goes. Now, back in the old days... I've seen one of my friends almost suck one of these down. So when you put it in here and seat it like so, you don't want to take your breath here. You want to take your breath here and then blow. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll suck the dart down. Here we go. Look at that. <clears throat> I want you to look at that. Freaking bullseye, right? bullseye unreal oh I'm getting carried away you can see it there so yeah it was kind of a kind of a fun thing actually I used to shoot it quite a bit back in my day uh, I had an apartment building uh, in uh, Ocean Township New Jersey and I used to hang a towel over the uh, uh, shower pole shower curtain whatever you call it I would slide the shower curtain back so as not to damage that and just hang a regular towel and stand in the bedroom and it would 
penetrate that towel and it was just an awesome target because I could shoot it in the house. Let's try it again on the box, see if that was just dumb luck. And yes, it was. That dart may have been curved, a, a, a bent a little bit because that baby was like a curveball. Yeah, there you go. But you can see they're burying themselves right up to the very end of the dart. So they have some velocity. And now we will demonstrate with a piece of wood. Uh, I have some darts in my pocket. It's like keeping syringes in your pocket. You got to be careful. Now, I have no idea whether this is going to stick or not. I did happen to pull a larger dart from my pocket. So we'll see if we have enough <clears throat> oomph, so to speak, to make it stick in that wood. Here we go. Well, that wasn't bad. I'm no aborigine. But you can see it clearly stuck right there and they're it's probably going to be pretty hard to pull out. I mean, you could really uh hurt something with one of these things, especially if you dipped it in a little poison. Let's do that again. That was fun. Ah, that one's a little a little bent. Now, that was my fault. I totally pulled. Don't pull the trigger. Squeeze the trigger. Here's another one. We're going to try it again. Here we go. Hopefully, we'll get a little closer. Not enough velocity. Not enough PSI. Here we go. I don't have many of these darts left. A little high, a little high and to the left there. I'm gonna do it again just because I'm having fun. So chime in, tell me if you've ever seen one of these, if you've ever had one. The, 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 what, what, what. Ah, that was a little better. And uh, tell me what you think about the blowgun. Crazy, I know, right? Boom, there it is. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember to keep your blowgun pointed in a safe direction. Yeehaw! Whoosh.